Hi friends, I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit about gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy. Specifically, how do we calculate these two things? So what is energy anyway? Your book says that it's the ability to do work. And we've been talking about work quite a bit lately. So hopefully it makes sense to relate these two. When you do work on something, you give it energy or you transfer energy to it. So let's look at this picture and think about what that might mean. The book here in this person's hand has been raised up off of the ground. So does it have the potential to do work or does is there potential for work to be done on it? Well, if he were to let go of that book, gravity would make that book fall. Gravity is exerting a force on the book and it would cause it to move through a distance which is equal to its height above the ground if, if the person were to let go of it. So gravity could do work on this book. That tells you that maybe the book has some energy. We know that work is force times the distance and the force that gravity exerts on this book is equal to its weight, which is the mass times gravity, the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. The distance that gravity would move this book is equal to the height where it is above the ground. So if the person were to let go of this book, the work that gravity would do on the book is equal to its mass times the acceleration due to gravity times its height. So it stands to reason that the energy that this book has before it falls is probably equal to the same thing. And in fact, that's true. The gravitational potential energy of any object is its mass times the acceleration due to gravity, which here on Earth is 9.8, times the height where, that it exists above the ground. And that tells you its potential energy relative to the ground. In this case, the gravitational potential energy of the book, as it's shown in the picture, is its mass, 0.5 kilograms, times g, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, times 1.5 meters. If you calculate that, you'll see that it is 7.35 joules. The equation for gravitational potential energy is shown here. Gravitational potential energy is defined as the energy associated with a mass that has been raised to some height. Sometimes we abbreviate gravitational potential energy as GPE to make it a little easier to write. So if we wanna figure out how GPE is related to its other variables and be able to solve for those other variables, um, we have an equation triangle, which you've seen before, but this one looks a little bit different because there are more variables to include. So fill in your equation triangle for gravitational potential energy on your notes now. If you look at the variables in your equation triangle, GPE is of course gravitational potential energy and it is equal to the mass times the gravitational constant times h, the height. If you wanted to calculate the mass instead, remember when we use these equation triangles, we cover up the thing we're trying to find, and that leaves us with GPE divided by g times h, and that is the mass. If instead we wanted to find the gravitational constant, we would cover up G and that leaves us with the gravitational potential energy divided by the mass times the height. 
Now we know that G is 9.8 on Earth, but you could use this to calculate G on another planet if you knew the potential energy that an object had and its mass and how high it had been raised above the ground. If you wanted to determine the height and you knew the gravitational potential energy, the mass, and G, you could calculate it by covering up the height here in this triangle, which leaves you with the gravitational potential energy divided by the mass times G. So fill in these equations on your notes page now. Let's do an example problem. Suppose a diver at the top of a 10 meter high diving platform has a mass of 50 kilograms. What is her gravitational potential energy? So we're calculating her gravitational potential energy when she's standing on the diving board, which is 10 meters above the surface of the water. So the problem tells you that her mass is 50 kilograms. We know that G is 9.8 meters per second squared. And we know that her height above the water is 10 meters. So if we look at our equations for GPE, we know that that is the mass times G times the height. So if we plug these numbers in, the gravitational potential energy is 50 times 9.8 times 10. And that gives us a gravitational potential energy of 4,900 joules. Kinetic energy can be calculated as well. What is kinetic energy? It is the energy associated with a moving mass. You can fill that definition in on your notes page. The equation triangle for kinetic energy also looks a little different. It's similar to the one for gravitational potential energy. If you look at your equation triangle here, you can relate the kinetic energy to the other variables in the equation as well. Fill in the equation for kinetic energy on your notes page now. Kinetic energy is equal to one half times m times v squared. Ke is the abbreviation that we use for kinetic energy. M is for mass. And in this case, the kinetic energy is related to the speed squared, which is written as V squared. If you wanted to determine how to write this equation in terms of mass, you could cover up the M, and that leaves you with Ke divided by one half times V squared. You can simplify that when you divide something by one half, it's the same thing as multiplying it by two. So you can also write the mass as two times the kinetic energy divided by the speed squared. If you wanted to determine the kinetic energy and the mass in terms of the velocity, you would cover up the velocity squared or speed squared here. And that leaves you with the velocity squared being equal to the kinetic energy divided by one half times the mass. So you can fill that equation in on your notes page now. Again, you can simplify that equation a little bit if you realize that dividing by one half is the same thing as multiplying by two. So V squared is equal to two times the kinetic energy divided by the mass. Now, 
V squared might not be the most convenient way to represent your speed. If you wanted to calculate just the speed alone, and you should write this down as well so that you have it, you can simplify that equation by taking the square root of both sides. The speed itself is the square root of 2 times Ke divided by mass. All right, so let's look at an example for kinetic energy as well. A 0.1 kilogram bird is flying at a constant speed of 8 meters per second. What is the bird's kinetic energy? Well, we know from the problem here that the mass of the bird is 0.1 kilograms and the bird's speed is 8 meters per second. If we use our equation for kinetic energy, the kinetic energy is 1 half times the mass times V squared. If we plug those numbers in that we know, the kinetic energy is 1 half times 0.1 times 8 squared, which gives us 3.2 joules. So probably tomorrow or our next class, we'll use these equations to calculate kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy. Thanks for joining me. Just a reminder, gravitational potential energy is the energy of a mass raised some height above the ground. The equation for gravitational potential energy is mass times g times the height above the ground. Kinetic energy is the energy of a moving object. The kinetic energy of an object is one half times the mass times the speed squared. Thanks for joining me, friends.